What's up, my people? Welcome to Fellowship Bible Church's Sermon Spotlight, where we're coming at you each and every week with a fresh weekend to debrief in an effort to send biblical truth. And what better way to do that than by the power of conversation? I'm one of your hosts, Caleb Pearson, nodding alongside me already, my co-host for the day, Mark Francis. What is up? Mark, how Caleb, you doing? How you doing, I'm, my friend? I'm doing great. Good. Happy coming post-Easter. Post-Easter. Yeah. Excited. Big weekend. As always. Yeah. Big weekend. Yeah. It was busy for me and it's I was gonna ask continue. like what did you busy where were you I mean I knew I wasn't gonna see you but I didn't know what no, you were doing. yeah I was part of Good Friday cool and then um, downstairs sure. in Fellowship 3 um, so there's just a lot happening mm-hmm. behind the scenes mm-hmm. um, and it's exciting to come out to see the positive impact that we saw from the community and the church coming out I, Mark you might have the numbers but it was big downstairs where I was in Fellowship 3 which is neat to see mm-hmm. because we had a number of around 190, 190 people the Easter before COVID hit. Okay. And we were thinking to ourselves, that is max. And next year, you know, 2020, we're going to have two services down there. Well, obviously we know what yeah. happened after that. But now that we had hmm. the first true kind of post-COVID service, we're at 189. 189 people downstairs in that small yeah, room, yeah. and people were excited. We had breakfast. We were able to worship together and celebrate together, and I'm excited just to see the body coming together and worship, and and plenty of people who I know were visitors or family members in town, and we're all excited to be there. So that's my experience, and I know upstairs in the, whether it was FSAT or the, the 8 and the 9, 30, 11 o'clock service is very similar. Um, hmm. So that's just the overall recap, not the spiritual recap, but just what happened here Physical in, in recap. the building yeah. was, to me, encouraging. It's such a very encouraging Good Friday services, too, at mm. 11 and 7. Yeah. Just very worshipful, very, I think, God-honoring, and uh, I've heard nothing but positive comments that people were mm. really, really encouraged and spiritually blessed by um, the Good Friday services. Yeah, well, it's all about the content. Yeah, you know, and so very, here, very rich here mm-hmm. at Fellowship. You know, we we understand and value the the idea of quality and excellence, which we're always striving for. But it's really about the content, mm-hmm. you know. So to have for a Good Friday service the passages of the seven last words of Christ being read with music, with responses, where we're remembering and reflecting what the cross means to us, but not sitting in that and ending there, knowing that there's still hope with the the song in, in Christ Alone being kind of the the core kind of song and with the scripture memorization passage of Hebrews 12 that we've been going through being mm. the, a key passage that the worship team really was, I'll be honest with you, it, it was one of the more challenging and time-consuming planning processes for a Good Friday services that I've ever been a part of. <laughs> I can't put my finger on it, oh. but it... it I, I, <laughs> It took a and long we've time. We've had some amazing Good Friday services in the past yeah. years. Yeah, mm-hmm. complicated and very, very good. But yeah, yeah, but just that was, there's was a lot of wrestling that went with the the content and the progression of where do we want the church to sit in this for an hour service for Good Friday, mm-hmm. Easter. We know that as well, but I really feel like that God was leading us down so many different ideas and paths, and where we ended up and landed on. I'm, thankful to say that that was his hand <laughs> that did it so. well and what two more important uh services mm. in, in terms of the christian calendar mm. mm-hmm. of good friday and easter I- I- even more so than the christmas yeah. the season because mm-hmm. it, uh, yeah. it is the gospel yeah christ died and he rose again yeah mm. and, and i'll say that i was put in a quick plug because easter doesn't end here it doesn't mm-hmm. mean that we stop doing church it doesn't mean we stop gathering it doesn't mean that we stop just talking about it but we still have this uh, spirit of invitation spirit of now what and mm-hmm. so there's a plug for the fellowship family podcast that i'll be communicating and chatting with scott santmar of just a few kind of just nuggets tidbits of wisdom there'll be four episodes that will drop over these next couple of weeks that um now what mm-hmm. now what and we can talk about that even here and now with our our episode here on the sermon spotlight but look for those because don't let it end. Yeah. Don't let this momentum and enthusiasm for the gospel and church and, and connecting with each other through that, don't let it stop and end now. There's mm-hmm. still more down the road. 
Good. It's good. So, Pastor Mark, I'll come your way, talk about the sermon a little bit, that whole idea of t- taking God at His Word and focusing on His promises for Easter. But uh, for me personally, to serve at the 9.30 and then attend the 11, the Christmas time and Easter time is when I know I get to see a lot of people I grew up in the church with. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they're back wherever the Lord ended up taking them. They're back worshiping with families and stuff. And so it's always a huge encouragement to see all them back together uh, just as the body doing that. Um, so with that, Mark, was there anything this Sunday or, or thereafter about uh, the, the sermon of as far as potential cutting room floor stuff or any conversations you had? And then we'll jump into a little bit of God's promises. Uh, yeah. Well, it's still, it always mystifies me that um, the disciples just didn't get it. Yeah. Mm. And you, you would think maybe one of them would have, <laughs> or out of the many followers of Jesus that, uh, you, know, you know, especially the women mm. who, you know, seem to have more of a spiritual sensitivity at times. Mm. I mean, a lot of stuff went over the heads of the disciples all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, we've talked about that in the past, uh, the feeding of the 5,000, 4,000, 5,000, and they still didn't get it. Mm-hmm. You know, who, who forgot to pack the picnic basket? You know? <laughs> and they're arguing when the bread of life and the guy who just fed 10,000s of people. So stuff was always going over the head of the disciples. But this, I mean, we went through those passages, a few of them, just briefly, Mark 8, 31, and 9, 9, and 9, 31, I think it was, and, and 10, 32, to 34, 14, 27, through 28. And um, he, he as, as Mark, uh, I think it's 8, 31, says, he stated the, ma- the matter plainly. I'm going to die, and three days later, you know, like, get out your day timer, <laughs> you know, yep. and there it is, there three it is. days later. And that any part of a day was a full day in Jewish reckoning. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, here we go. Mm. Um, he, he couldn't have said it any more clearly. Mm-hmm. And to the number of people that he said it to, I, I would. It's just shocking that w- not one would have would have. No one was yeah. camping out there that morning. Mm. And uh, and. And Christ is, Jesus and, his, and God's word has clearly stated things to us of promises in his word. And that's kind of where I think I wanted to go. Why, what, what do we miss? What, what is it that we just flat out aren't believing hmm. in terms of, of our walk with the Lord? And it's neat. I, I love the recap of those passages where Jesus laid it out for them so clearly. And, and we have even more of a clear, you know, in word, in text, in digital format of what God's they word had is. His spoken word. That is spoken mm-hmm. word, but they just still didn't get it. I'm reminded that there's a passage, and this is again foreshadowing to me and Scott Santmeyer's conversations, but in Matthew 28, right there at the Great Commission, Jesus is ready to leave them, and it says, But the eleven disciples proceeded to Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had designated. When they saw him, they worshiped him, comma, but some were doubtful. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. how can you then, st- doubtful of what? Here he is, mm-hmm. post Easter, resurrection has occurred. You've walked with him and talked with him for 40 days. He's about ready, to, whether you know it or not, going to ascend into the sky, and they're still doubtful. Yeah. You know, it's just human nature, I guess. That there's this component of questioning and being well, doubtful of what's happening. Now, now, I don't want to press this too much, but uh, we know uh, we know for a fact that the Jewish people had a misconception of Messiah. Mm-hmm. A, a dead Messiah, a crucified Messiah, that just, they didn't mm-hmm. factor it. And even though you had Isaiah 53, you had these these passages. So when Jesus is talking about that he's going to die, um, and Peter says, no, Lord, you know, and he, Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. It was just un, unthinkable mm. in the Jewish mindset. Now, what I don't want to press too far, what I was going to say is... Um, they they missed out that there was there's clear old testament um projecting of that i said isaiah 53 the sacrificial lamb all mm-hmm. all, all you know all of that imagery in the old testament it was clearly um uh, uh forecasted predicted in the scriptures of the messiah's first coming and what was going to happen to him mm. um and it makes me wonder that if if we are shaky in our Old Testament understanding, hmm. it might be a little shaky in me, even our New Testament understanding. It's a package deal. It certainly was for the disciples uh, and the Jews of that day. They they hmm. could not click. And if you don't catch uh, a crucified Messiah, there's no point of thinking of a resurrection. 
because why would you need it? Mm -hmm. the, the, it was an impossible thought. Interesting. So, so they never yeah. went there. They Almost never... being so shocked that he died. Right. Even, though, even right. when he predicted it. Right. Like he, he's not here for this purpose of dying. And, and, it, and mm. it was a, a lack of understanding of the Old Testament. Mm. Um, we do things here uh, and on our uh, foreign missions um, type ministries that we have, a creation of Christ where we lay out, and, and many uh, organizations do this, but you start at the beginning of Genesis and you, you know, you, you, right away in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, the proto euangelion that says, you know, he's going to crush you on the heel, mm -hmm. but you'll crush him on the head. Well, that gives you at least some hint that there's going to be something. He's going to nip you at the heel, mm -hmm. but you'll do dealt uh, a, a fatal blow to his head. There's something that's going to happen there, mm -hmm. and and on and on throughout the Old Testament. So as you lay out the those passages and work through and walk through the firm foundations of of the Old Testament teaching. Uh, it's the New Testament unfolds for you, but it didn't yeah. for the disciples. These these mm. Jewish men and women steeped in the Old Testament, yeah. they just didn't get it. And obviously, there was a spiritual blindness or something like that. But if if you if you didn't get a suffering Messiah, there's no point to get a resurrected Messiah. Mm. Mm -hmm. it, it, there's no point to that. So when Jesus is talking about I'm going to die, maybe they were thinking about that. And then when he says I'm going to rise again on the third day, they never got there because they were stumbling over. I'm going to die. That just doesn't compute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. I'm, I'm also excited to, to recap the hope that we have there from the Easter service and Easter. Yes. We think about the resurrection, but it was a fresh perspective for me to see a revelation passage being read in the singing time mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. hear mm -hmm. you then in the sermon recap all of the promises that we have through God's word and what he has given us and the one of the biggest promises of our hope of our resurrection and our and our life with him and to think and equate the singing of the saints and the bowing down and worshiping at the throne of that picture of revelation to equate that with the resurrection to equate that with Easter Sunday I found to be refreshing and something you know re-energizing to say yes there is hope mm -hmm. you know we can trust in his word we can trust in his promises to yeah. to then equate okay yes we're in the here and now we're celebrating Easter and the resurrection but there's still more promises to be fulfilled yeah it's a package deal that's 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 the thing I walk away with it's a package deal because Christ died and rose again because of that promise fulfilled all the other all the other package of blessings and promises uh are in play are good mm. they're, they're they're going to happen because of the resurrection mm -hmm. so that is the pivotal um the pivotal event of of all world history and certainly of our faith mm. and i think that the the desire in that sermon and 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 the whole morning of, of the easter morning was to get us to um, be reminded once again of, of taking God's word seriously and taking his promises seriously because there's mm. there's so many of them. Now, some are are harder to maybe accept than others, you know, and we can stumble over them and, well, yeah. I'm not, maybe yeah. we could ha still be doubting too. Right. And there's, and there's room for doubt. I'm not saying sure. that you, we can't just dismiss all the disciples as being buffoons because they're doubting. There's there's an element to continually just kind of growing and questioning. Look, there's going to be seasons of our own lives, my that's life, right. where I'm like, what am I doing here? Mm, what is yeah. happening? And there's a, that's, are, that's okay. Are you really going to come through for me? Like, are, are you sure you haven't left me? Or first, yeah. even, you know, of course, that was David back in the Psalms. Mm -hmm. He didn't have that New Testament perspective. But, you know, it was this almost forlorn sometimes, where are you? I've mm -hmm. talked with believers, yeah. uh, you know, in, in our era, the believers uh, of Jesus Christ who, who, who know cognitively that he's not going to leave us. It's a promise. Mm -hmm. But practically speaking... It's felt like he's left. It's, yeah, where are you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where are you? Mm -hmm. Which is where those psalms come from. That's right. You know, of mm -hmm. David questioning, you know, where are you, God? How can you... <laughs> How can you, and he's not implying leave me, but like, where are you in this mess? Yeah. And, and so we can have those same kind of, I, I guess, conversations with God yeah. um, and still be doubting. I just find it fascinating that they're standing right next to Jesus and they're, and they're doubting. Yeah, so, right. mm. <laughs> and, and all of the things that Jesus is saying to them, and, and it comes true. And down a couple of weeks, yeah. we're going to be talking about Pentecost. 
mm -hmm. uh, in our uh, Jesus Storybook Bible. So there is a profound difference between that passage you and yeah. then the the one that took place the next chapter in chapter two, where all of a sudden the Holy Spirit comes with power. Yeah, mm -hmm. and now you see uh, men and women willing to go to their death. The awakening, the Holy mm. Spirit coming. That's right. And, and, and to the, their point, they finally listened. I mean, Jesus tells them to go to go to a place in Jerusalem and wait yeah. for the Spirit to and come. And they did. And they did. Yeah. So there, yeah. And then you growth. see this new, this power, this boldness that it just didn't exist before. Yeah. 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 But that's that'll be coming up in a couple of weeks. I think another thing that stood out for me was this wasn't a a one-off Sunday where it's okay now now we're going to do an Easter thing but it did I, I just so appreciate the idea of a sermon series and and a focus and a common thread that the church can be doing because obviously Easter Sunday and Christmas Sunday are pretty seeker friendly services of we know that's going to be a there's a tick up in attendance but for for believers to come together and see that yes it's Easter Sunday but it's it's going to be that storybook Bible. It's going to be another one of those stories in the grand narrative of where Jesus is. So it's interesting to hear you say how like refreshing it was for mm. you because mm. it wasn't that it wasn't refreshing for right. me, but it was it was more of the same in a good way. I was like, we've been we've been I've been excited to get to this point from when we started, you know, in the fall yeah. as the as the story unfolds. And so it's just it paints such a sweet picture of our Savior and, and he died and rose again. And the implications of that are endless. So I let me throw, pitch a question to you guys. I think I did uh, gave you a heads up a little early, I hope. But uh, you know, as we talk about the promises of God and and what um, are precious to us, I had pitched a question to the congregation: you know, What mm. promises of God are, mm. are dear to you that you're holding on to? Uh, which ones do you struggle with, and that that you haven't? So what what promises of God's word mm. one that are, that mean that maybe the most to you? Mm. You, you kind of stole my thunder a little bit with our conversation already, because truly for me, it is the fact that God will not leave us or forsake us. And going back and looking at there's Old Testament passages that speak to that. I, I look at Deuteronomy 31, where Moses is speaking words to all of Israel, and he's really, it's his last kind of sermon, essentially, and he's on the mountaintop, and he's saying to all those, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid or tremble at them, for the Lord your God is the one who goes with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. And then he looks at Joshua and basically a couple of verses later says the exact same thing. The Lord is the one who goes ahead of you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. You know, obviously those are words of God to the nation of Israel and to Joshua, but you can carry those over to essentially to the Great Commission where Jesus is like, I will be with you always. Mm -hmm. even to the end of the age. Yeah. And so there is a word of Jesus that is relevant to us, that right. yes, I am always with you. Yeah. And, and it goes back to the Old Testament times of what he spoke to his promised people, and I can hold on to that and say, yeah, and, and thankfully I've never had bouts of depression or thinking that he's gone or away from me, hmm. but I can imagine that there's going to be a time in my life where I'm going to feel man, what is happening in, in my life, and you people watching or listening might be experiencing that right now. And Easter season right now might not be rejoiceful or celebratory, but he is here. <laughs> he is always going to be with us. He will not leave us or forsake us. And that is a promise that I, I find encouraging and can find peace in that. It's such a good application question because it, it, it's multifaceted. There's a couple different levels to it. One is, okay, I, I should really leave and think about God's promises. But then the other one is, I wonder how many of them there are. Mm. Like, is it a few? Is it a handful? Like, there's a lot that God has given us as far as assurance is concerned. He promises things, and there's there's lists of it. When you ask the question to us specifically before the podcast, Romans 8.28 came to mind. Mm. Spirit's writing through Paul to the church in Rome, and he says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. And now you can... Do your word studies of what it means to work together and whose definition of good we're really referring to there. It's probably not my own, but when, when he's talking to them and he reaches conclusions, like, what, what then shall we say? If God is for us, who can be against us? It's such a helpful reminder that I can process my circumstance based on the Creator and not the other way around. Uh, that, that would be an anti-promise uh, procedure. Mm -hmm. And so that that was one uh, that came to mind. Another one, you mentioned this, but God won't fail us, and, yeah. and the Bible specifies the, the, the characteristics and way, in, in, in ways that God won't fail. First uh, Chronicles 16.34 addresses the idea of 
God promises that his love will never fail. God promises to always be faithful to us. And I remember growing up in this church and the first time I discovered God is faithful and it's not just us who are called to be faithful. I was like, whoa, that's so cool. God is faithful. Mm -hmm. Uh, So those are a few that stood out. It was several years ago, Mark, where you you said this in a sermon about the faithfulness of God and knee-jerk reactions. We're always thinking that he's faithful to me. And, And so you pointed out in the sermon, I can't remember which one it was, but he's faithful to himself first and foremost. Hmm. Second of all, he's faithful to his word. And third, he's faithful to his people. And so there is a component of, oh, putting me in my place. Yes, he's true to himself first and foremost. You know, he cannot lie. He cannot um, be untrue to himself. Yeah. And then his word and what his promises are and then to us. So that that kind of rung with me many, many years ago about this idea of his promises and his faithfulness and his character that it really starts with God. And doesn't it's not about us. Yeah, I, I I was looking back in Isaiah because there's there's so many good verses. We, you know, we I taught through the book of Isaiah four or five years ago, whenever it was. Hmm. But um, Isaiah in Isaiah chapter um, forty, as he begins the the kind of the second half of his book, um, verse twenty one says, "Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been declared hmm. to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth?" It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, who spreads them out like a tent to dwell on. And he goes on. I mean, have you forgotten God? Verse 27 says, Why do you say, O Jacob, and assert, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and the justice do me escapes the notice of my God? Do you not know? Have you not heard? And then he gives us characteristics of God. Do, don't you know? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord... Jehovah, the creator of the ends of the earth, he does not become weary. His understanding is inscrutable. He he gives strength to the weary. The one who lacks might, he increases power. And he goes on, and even though you're you, 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 you're tired and you're running out, he, he lifts you up. Uh, if you wait upon him, he'll give you new strength. You'll mount up with wings of eagles and run and not get tired. And they will walk and not become weary. Mm-hmm. But it goes back to what you were just saying, Mark. He's true to himself. Mm-hmm. So this is his character. Mm-hmm. And for us to doubt his promises to us kind of begins to, it's, how do we view God? That, mm-hmm. That's what was happening yeah. in Israel, you yeah. know, doubting the promises of God. And the disciples. And, and, that, and it carries over. So he goes on in chapter 41, he gives this wonderful promise in verse 10 of chapter 41, do not fear, I am with you. Do not anxious, anxious to look about you. I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my my strong hand. Uh, chapter 43, verse 2 is, is, is similar. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched, nor will the flame burn you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Uh, so again, if we, if we forget... Th- if, if we're struggling with the promises of God, we're really struggling with the character of God. Mm, mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. what the Isaiah does here, or what God does through Isaiah the prophet, it, it comes back to the character of God. This is who I am. Mm-hmm. And um, you take that to the, to the death and resurrection of Jesus. Um, Acts 2.22, he was, he was, he was delivered mm-hmm. over by the predetermined plan and foreknowledge mm-hmm. of God. God had this plan for our eternal salvation. Where does that come from? God's love, mm. God's heart of grace. His character put his son on the cross, mm. died, but it was his character who raised him again on the third day Yeah, and because of the promises of God. So I, it, it doesn't mean that, as F- Philip Bliss wrote, when sorrows like sea billows roll, and we're, we're in the, as, um, uh, another writer once said, in the slew of despond, I think that was uh, John Bunyan in the uh, Pilgrim's Progress, when we find ourselves in the slew of despond, boy, the attacks come. And that's, the, you know, that, that's where Satan is going to come all the more and, and question the character of God. And that's where we need to mm-hmm. know what that's his what, promises are. We, yeah, we, we come need to back know to what know him and his promises. Yeah. They're intricately bound together. Um, so there's an old song that says every every promise in the book is mine. You know every word, every phrase, every line. I think it says something like mm-hmm. that. But we we 
um, we can take, I think, great comfort and great hope. And like you were saying, Caleb, make a list of them. I mean, just yeah. that's part of the Bible study things. Yeah. You know, what is, yeah. you know, what's this passage telling me about God? Is there something of God I need to hold on to? Is some mm -hmm. promise I can claim? Mm -hmm. Is there some sin I need to confess? You mm -hmm. know, uh, but uh, it's full of promises. Mm -hmm. I'm reminded of Ephesians 1. I mean, that's another just go-to list of promises, but blessings, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. uh, just he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, mm -hmm. that will be holy and blameless before him. And then, Caleb, you're talking about love. In love, he predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the kind intention of his will. And he just goes on, lists the gospel, lists what he's done for us, have been sealed and marked with him and all of the ends of things to the praise of his glory. Mm -hmm. It's all, I mean, so mm -hmm. all of those blessings, all of those promises are still, again, towards pointing towards God, mm -hmm. toward, to display his glory, to promote his glory, yep. to reveal himself to a world. Um, and that's why we're, and what, <laughs> those promises are there and for And what is the common denominator between, uh, dear Lord, thank you so much for blank, and dear Lord, we're going through it. Well, the common denominator is, I think it's hard to measure maybe how we're doing and growing in our faith. Hopefully it, we're living in such a way that it's becoming harder and harder to forget about God in, in the blessing and in the trial. Mm. Hopefully hopefully it's getting harder to forget about God. I think that's something we should mm. strive for. And, and Romans 5 addresses uh, suffering in, in regards to, to a, a promise. Not only that, but we can rejoice in our sufferings mm. knowing that our suffering produces endurance. Mm. So for a believer, suffering has a purpose, and that endurance produces character, character produces hope, and that hope doesn't put us to shame because of what? Again, the common theme. God's love has been poured into our hearts. There's, mm -hmm. there's an identity truth in there mm -hmm. through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And to, to encounter suffering in that way mm -hmm. is a gift and an opportunity. Right. And the unbelieving world doesn't have that. Paul said in, in 2 Corinthians uh, 12, uh, where he was going through his whatever it was, mm -hmm. he asked three times for it to be removed, this thorn in the mm -hmm. flesh. Mm -hmm. But uh, he said, "God said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. I promise." He doesn't say I promise, but that's kind of what the mm -hmm. implication is. Most gladly, Paul says, "Therefore, I will rather boast about my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Um, therefore, I am well content with weaknesses." and insults and distress and persecutions and difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. How can he say that, Paul? Because God promised it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, he can only say that, experience it, mm -hmm. simply because God promised it. Mm -hmm. Going back to what you said, you know, Psalm 103, um, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits. benefits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we, we have to rehearse that. Yeah. And... Uh, that's, again, part of what we do on uh, as we gather as a body of believers uh, on the Lord's Day is we rehearse those benefits and we claim those promises. And the call is to be encouraged then to live in light of that mm -hmm. when we go our separate ways and when we're all alone sometimes in the darkness of our home or in the quietness of our own little soul, uh, mm -hmm. those promises of God can... can um, keep uh, blessing songs us. Songs constantly come to my head. So there's songs, there's this scripture, there's this word through, through mm -hmm. the studying that there's even listening to our conversation right now hopefully can be inspiring, encouraging you to point yourself wherever you are during the busyness of your life listening to this back to a reminder of who God is and what he's done for us. So there's there's all kinds of tools and things I think that are resources for us to go to to mm -hmm. remember what God's word is and and, and then apply them yeah. to, to know that, okay, through the power of his spirit, we'll be able to display the fruits of the spirit to the world around us, to be able to, uh, you know, recall his faithfulness and know what his promises are mm -hmm. and apply them so that we don't get down the dumps, yeah. mm -hmm. so that we don't become doubtful yeah. or forgetful or clueless of who God is. Yeah. You know? And all bets would have been off. I mean, all of it would be for naught if Jesus had stayed at the tomb. Mm -hmm. So that is, again, that is the crux of the faith, which is why I think Jesus said to his disciples, go and be my witnesses, witness of this, mm -hmm. the resurrection. And and uh, over and over again in Acts, that's what they're proclaiming. Uh, this Jesus that you killed, God raised from the dead, yep. a fact to which we are witnesses. Yep. Mm -hmm. So they're fulfilling that calling. And we need to tell, we, we need to, 
witness to ourselves sometimes. It mm -hmm. all comes back down to, hey, there was a, 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 an, a, a cross where Jesus died, a tomb that he was placed, but it is now empty. He is risen. He is risen indeed. And it's, that's our hope. It's yeah. easy to meditate on uh, uh, the money's tight or, or the kids are really ticking me off or things are just not going well at work, mm -hmm. but to meditate on, but the tomb is empty. Mm -hmm. it, it, it takes that, that act and the faith and it's not going to happen automatically in this world. We, yeah. we have got to fight it. So. Like full circle, that's where the Good Friday service started mm -hmm. with the distractions of the world, the, the, mm -hmm. the things and the sins which so easily entangle us mm -hmm. and the encumbrances of the world around us. What are we called to do? Just fix our eyes on Jesus. Mm -hmm. and, and so there's, there's nothing else but to do for that and then know what his promises are and hold fast to them and, and then we'll be able to share it with the people around us. So there, there's... Mm -hmm. it's, it's a common theme, guys. I mean, yep. there's nothing yep. new here that we're talking about yeah. in our podcast. Live it out. <laughs> hold on to those promises. Live it out. So as Peter said, um, people will uh, ask you for the hope that is within you mm -hmm. uh, when, they, when they see that displayed. And you can give a, a defense for that hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, C.S. Lewis said, Christians should be different in the most curious of ways. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is it about you, man? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's exciting times. Uh, it snowed yesterday, and the weekend's a high of 82. So yeah. very exciting yes. times. exciting times. Uh, crazy stuff. Yes. Mark, what Climate do we need change. to uh, tell people about calendar-wise, FBC-wise, before we get out of here? Yeah, a couple things. So this coming Sunday night, um, there is a Kid Zone musical oh, presentation right. that is 24th happening. 24th already. So um, I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm deeply entrenched in planning and preparing for it just from the production standpoint, but mm. the Kids Zone worship leaders, uh, Cole McQuaid and many of his team are excited about putting the kids on stage and present something to yeah. us all. So it's an opportunity to bring a friend, um, be reminded of uh, what the gospel is all about, and they're going to talk about the fruits of the Spirit and scripture memory and understanding what God's promises and truths are in that musical. So hmm. coming out Sunday night. Um, uh, 6 p.m., I 6 think. 6.30. 6.30. Okay, yeah. Cool. Yeah. And I'm going to hate it. I'm going to miss it. Lisa and I are going to be heading to the Cove in Asheville, oh, nice. North Carolina, Billy Graham Center. We're, we're oh, celebrating cool. our 45th wedding anniversary. Wow. That's so cool. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Just before the outlaw of child marriages. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> old. Oh, did I? Get, uh, it's six o'clock. Is it? I thought I'm it was sorry. six. I'm sorry. No, I'm, okay. I should know. Am I, let's now, hey, let's I, air on the earlier am, time. Am I Come allowed? Come and socialize. Am hang I out. Uh, uh, faux pas. Yeah. That? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's coming up. Um, and by the way, there's also uh, we we do need some volunteers. So talking about a level of service for Apple Blossom Prayer mm -hmm. Brunch, which happens the Friday of Apple Blossom. So just find me if if you need to get plugged in. We do have a sign up um, online, but that's more complicated. Just track me down. Call Mark, the church office. Call the church office. Mark F at fbcva.org or call. So, yeah, there's there's all kinds of opportunities. Those are the two things coming up. Hmm. And um, and very soon we will be saying goodbye to our the beloved time children's pastor, yeah. Charlie Spencer, and then our beloved uh, all-purpose uh, all purpose player. Uh, so many hats. Right? Many hats. John, <laughs> John Morrison of 29, 29 years of uh, on mm. staff. So That's we'll, crazy. We'll keep you yeah. informed on those events. Yeah. yeah, and I am going to attempt to get them in this podcast booth and have some conversations. So Sweet. be on the lookout for that as well. Good. Okay. All that and more, fbcva.org. Uh, the fact of the matter, everybody, is that sermons are not meant to take an hour, but rather transform a lifetime. Until next week, much love. God bless.